So Bitcoin is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place at the moment. It's not really trending anywhere. It's sort of consolidating in this range between 30 and a half thousand and 28,000. Not a lot happening for the past two weeks. Obviously, it's gonna break out at some point, either up or down. And I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know where it's gonna go. I don't have a price prediction in the short term. I do in the long term, and we'll get to that in a few moments. But if you're used to YouTube gurus just opening up TradingView, slamming a couple of lines on the chart, and saying that they know what's gonna happen, it's all baloney. Nobody knows with 100% accuracy, it's just everybody's best guess. And when one out of their 50 predictions comes true, they can say, yeah, called it. By the way, my signals group, just five bucks a month, sign up now, it's not gonna happen here. So as you can see clearly, here's a 17 centimeter pattern reversal from the 2012 level, combined with the Fibonacci 16.9, by my signals. Let's keep it real here and smash the like button so we can keep it real on a much bigger scale. And doubly smash the like button for last video's best comment by I'm unsubscribing. Are we sure people won't run into safety when Tether collapses? What is the safety in the crypto market? Bitcoin. And this actually got me thinking about Bitcoin. Now, shame on I'm unsubscribing for not being subscribed. So he's missing out on the glory. Comment below if you want to be featured in the next video. So Bitcoin at the moment is not really trading based on any technical foundations. Maybe except the good old support and resistance, which you know can be used in conjunction with the RSI, the moving average, the Fibonacci, but that's a topic for a different video. What I do know reasonably well is that instead of looking at chart patterns and candle patterns and zodiac signs and constellations, a much better way to look at Bitcoin right now is through the dynamics of supply and demand. In fact, it's a much better metric to try to predict where the price will go. And what we're seeing now is sort of this psychological battle between the demand side and the supply side playing out on the charts. What do I mean by that? Well, the price is stuck in the middle because the demand dropped massively with the highest raising of interest rates since Bill Clinton was the president, the Luna UST crash, and the stock market sell-off. All these factors have created a risk-off sentiment, lowering Bitcoin's demand and sending the price down. But this lower price point is also attracting higher demand from institutions and retail investors who really believe that this is the bottom for Bitcoin and that we cannot possibly go lower. In particular, the institutional interest, which is super high at the moment because many of these Jillian dollar companies bought Bitcoin during its insane bull run. And if the price drops much lower, they're set to lose a lot. So in large part, Bitcoin's demand is held up by hope at the moment. And by the fact that if it goes down, many powerful individuals are losing a lot of money. Powerful individuals don't like to lose. I mean, Binance's CEO just lost $80 billion this year in crypto alone. And there's actually rumors that he's now a shift manager at his local McDonald's. I respect that. It's all about diversifying the cash flow. Just kidding. But if you remember what I mentioned in my previous video is that crypto trust is fading and crypto trust is the main driving force behind crypto demand. Now, obviously this is evidenced by the fact that we lost around one third of the market cap this year. No brainer, right? And the very uncertain geopolitical situation, economic situation is actually pushing people to take their money off these risky markets and park it somewhere else. And collectively, this leads to more supply, selling pressure, and less demand. As you know, crypto is probably the most volatile out of all asset classes. So folks are more likely to ride out the uncertainty on more stable boats like gold or Forex, even though those two are devalued now due to the inflation. Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes. If we're thinking in terms of market dynamics between supply and demand, there is one cyclical event that almost always leads to higher demand for Bitcoin and thus higher prices. And right now, we're pretty much smack dab in the middle of the cycle called Bitcoin halving. In fact, it should really be called crypto halving because the run up in Bitcoin almost always increases the prices of altcoins as well. I'm gonna show you this halving chart in just a second and explain to you why I'm more bullish in the long run. But first, let me try to explain why I'm less bullish in the short term. In the current crypto timeline, we saw a huge dent to the total market cap when Fed raised the interest rates. Around $200 million were taken off the table. And the Fed is already proposing further rate hikes in their summer calendar. When is the next raise? That is hard to say, but researchers from The Economist believe that the Fed may raise their interest rates a total of seven times in 2022. 
And if we sum these expected seven hikes together, we get a grand total of a 3% interest rate hike for 2022. Now a 0.5 raise, it raised around 200 million. What happens when it's 3%? I can tell you it's not looking good for crypto in the short term. And remember for a second, the major force behind Bitcoin's movement, supply and demand. And if you didn't know this, when the Fed raises interest rates, their primary objective is to combat inflation. But the way they do this is through lowering consumer demand. So we have the big rule makers actively trying to combat demand. And crypto, well, it's definitely not an everyday necessity. So the way we could see a rise in Bitcoin's prices in the short term would be a massively increased demand. But we have the rule makers trying to combat this demand. So that is one of the primary reasons why I think through these interest rate hikes, crypto ain't gonna recover, at least not this year. And I'm not alone in my analysis. Just yesterday, I conducted a peer-reviewed double-blind placebo PhD study that indicated that 40% of you think Bitcoin will end the year under 20,000 per coin. So all of this, good news if you're a short seller, make hay while the sun shines, so to speak. Loads of opportunities in both crypto and stocks. But I also wanted to look at something more hopeful in the long run. And I believe this coincides perfectly with everything I just told you about the interest rates. And it will prove my point why I think that the next Bitcoin bull run is going to start somewhere around 2023. And here, is my best argument based in simple supply and demand. And a bit of a backstory because this is an inclusive channel and there's some beginners here who might not know how it works, so bear with me. And the way Bitcoin works is that Satoshi, the guy who created it, made it so that there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. It's just one of the reasons why Bitcoin is priced higher than other cryptocurrencies where the circulating supply may run into hundreds of millions or even billions or trillions. Scarcity is hard-coded into Bitcoin's network. And right now we have around 19 million Bitcoins in existence, which brings us to about two more million Bitcoins left to be unlocked. You know, unlocked for buying, selling and holding. Who unlocks them? Well, it's the infamous Bitcoin miners. They validate the network and keep it running, so to speak, by solving complex mathematical equations with their GPUs or designated mining rigs. And for doing this, they are rewarded in Bitcoin. And Bitcoin halving is this hard-coded algorithm which basically shrinks these rewards in half every four years. It essentially slows down the pace at which new Bitcoins are generated. In 2012, there were 50 Bitcoins unlocked every 10 minutes. Today, there are just 6.25 Bitcoins generated every 10 minutes. And around 2024, Bitcoin will slash its rewards again, and there will only be about three Bitcoins generated every 10 minutes. So a better way to understand it is that today, right now, today, 900 new Bitcoins will be generated and added to the circulation. In 2024, after the fourth halving, it will shrink to 450 Bitcoins every day, and then 225 in the fifth halving, and so on and so on, until about the year 2140. Now, why is this bullish? Well, for long term, this fixed Bitcoin supply actually protects it from inflation. Unlike the Fed, Bitcoins cannot be printed endlessly. There's only ever gonna be 21 million Bitcoins. And this halving is sort of a built-in mechanism for creating demand, which is good. Every four years, there's less of something that everybody hopefully wants, so the price naturally increases as well. Now, that was a bit of a tangent on Bitcoin mining, but how does this play out in our long-term Bitcoin analysis? Well, according to this Bitcoin halving countdown, we're about one year and 333 days away from the next halving, a supply shrinking event. And historically, Bitcoin has always been in a downtrend sometime around two years before the halving, which is where we are now. And then it's always started to rally right around the year before the halving, which puts us somewhere around spring 2023. And then the most astronomical gains have always come one year after the halving, which puts us right after the fourth Bitcoin halving in 2024. And I think this halving historical chart offers us a prime example of how supply and demand has affected the Bitcoin market and drove it up every time. And I also think it offers us a much more realistic expectation of when this bear market 
is going to reverse and start trending back up again. Because once again, I want you to remember this every time before halving, there's a downtrend. One year, precisely one year before the halving, starts to trend higher. And then one year after the halving, starts to really gain some traction up. Now, of course, Bitcoin could reverse sooner because, hey, it's crypto and sometimes things don't make sense. But I would say with around 60 to 70% conviction that we probably won't see another Bitcoin all-time high up until about the year before the halving, which is in line with around mid-2023, which coincidentally is also expected to be the turnaround point for the bear market in stocks as well. It could really be that we have to wait a little bit for the inflation to be curbed and the equity markets to recover to see some serious meaningful gains for Bitcoin as well. Time will tell, but I think my argument is pretty tight. Provided that Tether, well, you know what? Just watch my previous video and find out about all the secrets that Tether has. Subscribe, peace. By the way, a quick side note, it says here that around 20% of Bitcoin have been lost. So actually the supply is a little bit less and actually that means the price should be a little bit higher. Subscribe, peace.